Today I'm going to discuss about various reproductive strategies in animal kingdom. The story of life in Earth is the story of change over time, the process which generated incredible biodiversity of the planet. The process we call by the name evolution. So many biologists have tried to explain the phenomenon of evolution, but in 19th century, two British scientists, Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace, independently arrived at the same conclusion that the evolution happens through natural selection. The theory could explain the constantly changing nature of life to better adapt to reproduce in constantly changing environments. See, there is a very popular example of some birds, like we can call it as Darwin's fingers. Similar looking birds have adapted their beak for living to coexist in a heterogeneous environment of Galapagos Islands. And this radiation and this adaptation, we can call it as adaptive radiation. So we are talking about the adaptation of organism. In Darwin's word, it is the fitness of the organism. Richard Dawkins is a famous writer and a scientist who through his famous book, The Selfish Gene, has said that organisms are survival machines. Reproduction is the key element or key feature of evolutionary fitness of the organisms. So the reproductive strategies also is a product of evolution. From the dawn of life of Earth, several strategies have been employed by the organism to survive, to enha enhance their adaptability, uh, to live in changing environments. So as we are discussing about the various reproductive strategies, which is going to enhance the reproductive fitness of an organism, let us have a look on what is a reproductive strategy. A reproductive strategy is a structural, functional or the behavioral adaptation of an organism to enhance its fitness, to enhance the chance of fertilization or to increase the adaptable value of an organism. See, the ultimate goal of every organism is to have maximum number of surviving offsprings with spending least amount of energy. We can call it as a reproductive effort. So reproductive effort means to produce maximum number of surviving offspring by spending least amount of energy. So they are saving energy too to produce maximum number of individuals. See, uh, we have to go back to the basics of reproduction to understand it more clearly. See, basically, the reproduction can be divided into two that we all know as sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. As sexual reproduction means the uh, parent, uh, one parent can produce a progeny which is genetically very similar or identical. And we can call that progeny as a clone, identical, genetically identical clone. And in case of sexual reproduction, it is different. Two parents are involved there and uh, two parents produce progeny which is genetically distinct from their parents and we can call that progeny as offspring and we can call that uh, individual as offspring. So uh, in asexual reproduction it is clone and sexual reproduction it is offspring. So, uh, so many costs are associated with this uh, sexual reproduction rather than asexual reproduction because asexual reproduction is a very simple method of reproduction which is employed by lower forms of life. So it can multiply, it can produce very identical clones but it is, as I said earlier, it is genetically very similar or exact photocopy of that parent organism. So we need genetic variability to enhance or to generate diversity. So we are focusing more towards the sexual reproduction. Now we, uh, it is evident that uh, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction has got several differences and the sexual reproduction is very much essential for creating the diversity of life on earth and sexual reproduction need three major components. First one is the mating type or the sexes of organism, male and female counterpart. Second one is the specialized organ for producing sex cells that is no, uh, known by the name gonads. In case of female it is ovary and in case of male it is testis. And third component is gametes or sex cells which is dimorphic in nature. You can see here there is a sperm 
uh, which is a gamete of male, uh, which is very small and is having a flagella for motility. And the female gamete is very large uh, and it is immortal, that is known as ova or egg. So, uh, as discussed now, we need three components for sexual reproduction. One is the mating type of sexes, second one is the gonads, and third one is the specialized the sex cells, which is dimorphic in nature, which is known as gametes. So, let us have a look on different types of fertilization. So I have mentioned about fertilization and fertilization is the fusion of male and female gamete. So female gamete and male gamete comes closer together to fuse as a diploid cycle. That process is known as fertilization, also called as syncomy. And the, after the fertilization, the cycle will divide through cleavage, differential cleavage. And then it will trans, uh, transform into an embryo, later on into a fetus and emerge out or spawn out as an uh, individual, uh, literally individual. Okay, let us have a look on different fertilization methods. First, I will explain about the strategy which is employed by fishes and frogs like semi-aquatic and aquatic animals. They employ external fertilization strategy. So external fertilization strategy or spawning means simultaneous release of gametes of male and female in the medium where it lives and it comes closer for fertilization but it is less controlled manner. So uh, there is some limitation for the external fertilization that it may not be possible for all the gametes of uh, male and female to fuse together. So we have a less control over the external fertilization and the medium is very much essential. In case of aquatic animals, the water, watery medium helps the male gamete to propagate towards the female and also it protects from the desiccation, uh, desiccation of eggs and or even the gametes. Uh, but here in the, as, uh, in the external fertilization, uh, there is an, another mandatory thing like gametes need to be very uh, high in number because for the success of reproduction it is very much essential. In contrary, there is another strategy which is known as internal fertilization. Internal fertilization is a fertilization event which is evident in terrestrial animals. In case of reptiles, we can take an example of reptile. What happened is they developed a specialized organ for transferring the male gametes into female reproductive tract. That genital is known as the copulatory organ. So through the copulatory organ, male can transfer the male gametes to female genital tract and the fertilization is taking place over there inside the female body. And that kind of fertilization is known as internal fertilization. I'm talking about the second strategy after discussing about the first strategy that is external fertilization. So it is better evolved strategy, internal fertilization. Here the fertilization of syncomy is taking place inside the female body. But remember one thing, there is an additional organ which is known as copulatory organ or genital. Okay, so that is about the internal fertilization. Now we will look at the uh, different methods of uh, growth or development of embryo. See, uh, in some cases, the embryo will grow inside the body of organism or in some cases, embryo will go, uh, grow in, outside the body of female organism. Those conditions in which the embryo will mature or grow or develop outside the female organism, uh, we can call it as oviparity. It, it is developing inside a egg. You can see here in the picture, there is an egg which is covered by a cladoic, uh, cladoic shell. I mean, cladoic means shell, shelled apparatus. Inside that, there are four extra embryonic membranes. Uh, uh, chorion is there, allantois is there, amnion is there, yolk sac is there. So yolk sac is providing nourishment for the growing embryo inside. And that cladoic X or shelled X protects the egg from the harsh environment of terrestrial mode. And later on, this uh, strategy, which is popularly known by the name oviparity, which was employed by reptiles, birds, and so many lower forms also, uh, but it is not cladoic. 
uh, was re uh, later replaced by another strategy which is known as VV parity. VV parity is evident in mammals. See, in mammals, as the embryo is growing inside an egg outside the female body, uh, least protection can be expected. But in case of uh, another strategy, that is VV Paris strategy, giving birth st strategy, which is employed by higher group of animals, that is mammals, there is a specialized chamber inside female body, which is known as uterus, which helps to uh, helps the embryo to grow and develop. And uh, in that uterus, there is a placenta, which helps to uh, give nourishment to the embryo and also to exchange the gases between embryo and uh, mother's blood and uh, the elimination of nitrogenous waste products from the body of fetus or embryo is also uh, possible through this placenta circulation. So placenta is acting as an intermediate form between the mother's blood and fetal blood or embryo blood. So it is a better advanced strategy to protect the developing embryo. So the, this is called VV parity. And after that, it will give birth to the uh, individual organism, infant organism. And uh, as far as we have discussed right now, the difference between OV parity strategy and VV parity strategy. OV parity strategy means the uh, embryo is developing uh, externally huh? or external gestation method. And uh, VV parity strategy is the embryo is developing inside the female body, that is uh, internal gestation method. And now we will discuss about the development of the young one. In the initial period of development of young one, we can call it as critical period, some individuals, some uh, young ones uh, can defend themselves just after birth. We can call it as precocial animals. Most of the ground birds also see, uh, shows this behavior. It can defend itself just after birth. So it is an adaptive, uh, what, what, what we can say, like it is an adaptation for that kind of animals to uh, survive in uh, very harsh environment. And there is a contrary thing also. Uh, there is another kind of development which is known as altricial. In this case, the individual, I mean newly born babies, cannot defend themselves. So they have to rely on the parental care by their parents. So parents has to exhibit parental care to protect this easily susceptible uh, young ones. So this is called uh, precocial and artificial strategies of development. So far we have discussed about the strategies of fertilization that is external fertilization and internal fertilization. After that we have discussed about the oviparous condition and viviparous condition and after that we have discussed about the precocial development and altricial development. Now we will look at the more complicated strategies of animal behavior. One is the RNK strategy of behavior. RNK strategies of behavior is totally different kind of behavior in which the number of individual offspring formed is counted. See, here in case of human and elephant, that is mammal of course, uh, what happens is their maturity period will come not directly after their birth, it will take some time and they produce very few uh, individuals and they will take care of them for a longer time. So they will exhibit a parental care for that. And that kind of strategy is known as K strategy. Okay, there is a second strategy which is known as uh, R selection strategy. R selection strategy happens in invertebrates. We can take the example of insects. In, in insects, we can see there are a lot of offsprings are there and uh, they reach their sexual maturity very soon after uh, hatching. And after that, uh, they spend very little time for carrying their young ones because uh, there is a probability for losing their life, their individual life uh, in a very uh, harsh environment or changing environment. So they have to produce as much individuals as possible, as much offsprings as possible for their survival value. So that is called our strategy. Uh, now we will talk about some different strategies uh, based on how many times an, a parent give birth to babies or uh, how many times a parent produce their next offspring, next generation offsprings. 
and that strategy is known as semel paris and hetero paris strategy for the semel paris strategy i would say an individual organism reproduces only one time in their life one time reproduction in their life and that is called semel paris here we can see the example of salmon pacific salmon over there and a very basic organisms like some plants is showing this kind of uh, strategy they will reproduce only one time in their life and uh, in contrast there is another strategy which is known as heteroparous heteroparous we humans including in that heteroparous conditions like we can reproduce many times in our life uh, like that like uh, uh, human beings and other higher animals can reproduce many more times and that is uh, heteroparous condition so these are the different uh, strategies for having how many times an animal uh, reproduces so far we have discussed about so many strategies of development uh, reproduction fertilization so many thing all belongs to the uh, strategies of reproduction uh, we are talking in terms of evolution too uh, now i want to discuss about some particular animals which is of more sluggish nature or more sessile nature uh, like earthworm uh, snail like that or uh, some mollusk uh, and uh, in that case two sexes are not seen both sexes are seen in the same individual zoologists call that kind of animals by the term hermaphrodites so the hermaphrodites are animals which contain both sexes it includes exam for example earthworm snail etc so uh, sometimes these hermaphrodites have a special tendency to change its sex whenever the need is arising we we can take the example of uh, clownfish you might be very familiar with the clownfish like there is a character called nemo uh, in a movie very popular movie finding nemo in that this kind of fish is, is having a peculiar nature so all this call it as sequential hermaphroditism in which the all individuals of a colony will be in a single sex initially that is male and when time arises for reproduction the most dominant male will turn into a female and this condition is known as proto androgynous condition so initially all the members of the colony will be male and most prominent male will switch over to another sex female and then reproduces and this type of phenomenon is known as sequential hermaphroditism and especially this in this condition it is proto androgynous condition prot means initial androgynous mean male so initially they are all males and example is clownfish nemo remember and second condition is proto gynous condition proto gynous condition all the individuals of the colony will be initially female and the most dominant female will switch over to another sex of male when the need is arised and gobies are famous for this kind of sex change from female to male or proto gynous condition proto means first gynous mean female so the first female generation turns to a male only one individual will turns to a male and that will be the dominant female of that garden and there are certain organisms in nature associated with the corals which can change their sex in bidirectionally in two direction so bidirectionally sex change can be evident in a specific fish which is known as gobiodon histrio huh? which is a coral fish which can change its sex in two ways so this is an amazing kind of world we are living in there are lot of reproductive strategies we can see around us and uh, here is an introduction huh, of all the reproductive strategies which is known till today thank you so much for listening me patiently thank you